Hi, everybody. I'm Susie Orman, and you are watching The Susie Orman Show. Tonight, we are going to talk about your retirement roadmap, the rules to retirement, whether you are 20, 30, 40, 50, or 60. There are things that you need to do right here and right now so that one day you can retire. Now, you may be thinking, what's Susie talking about? I can't think about retirement right now. I can barely pay my bills. Well, I have a question for all of you. If you're thinking that, and you better be able to answer this question. If you can't afford to pay your bills while you have a paycheck coming in, how are you going to be able to afford those exact same bills? You think your electricity, your phone, gasoline, insurance costs are going away? They aren't. How are you going to be able to pay those exact same bills later on in life when you no longer have a paycheck coming in? So whether you like it or not, you have got to start right here and right now to save for your retirement. So I'm going to be talking to you tonight about where should you be putting your pedal to the metal? Where do you really need to go for it? Where do you need to put your brakes on and not do something that maybe you are doing? And where should you park that money if you need to be safe and sound? Now, as I'm giving you these rules, you have got to understand I'm already going to assume that you are totally out of credit card debt and you have your eight-month emergency fund. Because we know that here on the Susie Orman Show, those are mandatory items. Before you do anything else in your life, you need to have that done. So assuming that you have that, here is what I want you to do if you are in your 20s. Time is the most important ingredient in your retirement roadmap. Time makes all the difference for you in the world. Let me give you an example. If you start to invest right here and right now, and let's say you're 25 years of age, and you decide you want to open up a Roth IRA, you qualify for it. And the maximum you can put in a Roth IRA per year is $5,000. And you decide you're going to be smart. You're going to listen to Susie Orman. And you're going to take that $5,000 divided by 12. That's $416 per month. And you are going to put $416 per month every single month all the way until you are 65 years of age. So you're going to do it for 40 years. Over those 40 years, you have averaged an 8% annual average rate of return. If you do that every single month until you are 65 years of age, do you know that you will have approximately $1,420,000? That's pretty good if you ask me. But you're out there saying, Susie, I'm 25 years of age. I don't want to be putting $416 every month in a retirement account. I want to play. What difference can it, can it make? What if I waited till I was 35 to start? $5,000 a year for 10 years, that's only a $50,000 difference. Big deal. I'll start when I'm 35 rather than 25. Well, if you start at 35 and do the exact same thing, do you know at the age of 65, you would have only $620 thousand dollars in your Roth IRA. Oh, that is at about an $830,000 difference. So for those of you in your 20s, that's where I want you to put your pedal to the metal. I want you to fund your retirement accounts, especially the Roth IRAs to the max. Where do I want you to put your brakes on? For those of you who work for a corporation that has a 401k or 403b plan, I only want you to contribute up to the point of the company match. After that point, I want you to put the brakes on and I don't want you to contribute to your 401k or 403b. I'd rather see you do a Roth IRA. And where do I want you to park your money? For those of you who need to save money, I want you to go to ratebrain.com and I want you to find great yields for money markets, savings accounts, even checking accounts so that you can park your money so you have it there when you need it. Let's go to Monica right now. She is 23 years of age, and she is coming to us from South Carolina. What do you want to know, Monica? Um, hi, Susie. I'm so excited to talk to you. Thank you. Um, I'm 23, and I'm already worrying about my retirement. I work for a nonprofit company who mm. doesn't match funds in their 403B plan. Yes. I want to get something easy that I don't have to think about, and I've looked at target retirement funds, and the minimum to start is $3,000. Yeah. 
I only have 5000 in my savings, which won't leave me with an emergency fund or liquid cash if I should go to graduate school. Yes. Do I take the plunge and start with this type of plan or wait until I have my eight-month emergency fund? Listen, Monica, if you look back over the year 2008, 2009, what essentially, mainly 2008, what happened to target retirement plans? These retirement plans were, that were supposed to be protecting you or doing certain things based on your age, they went down along with everything. Else, I have never been a big fan of Target retirement plans. Number one, number two, three thousand dollars to start. Can anybody get a clue out there? These kids are trying to save for their retirement, but how do you start? Listen to Monica's problem, everybody. How do you start with three thousand dollars? So. Here is my advice to you, and I just have to say, I do not normally do this, but today is a very, very special day. Today on QVC, I launched what I'm calling the Susie Orman Save Yourself Retirement Program. This is the answer, in my opinion, to people like you, to your needs, where you don't have 3000 or a whole lot of money to start. Even if you do, it might meet your needs. Here is how it works. You can open this up for as little as $100. You don't need any more money than that. There is a company by the name of Dorsey Wright and Associates. They have been the go-to people on Wall Street now for years in recommending to financial advisory firms what exchange-traded funds should be purchased. Guess what? They're going to be recommending them to you right now via a monthly newsletter. You're going to get to open up an account at TD Ameritrade. No fees to buy or sell exchange-traded funds. I'm telling you, this is something that you should do. So tune in to QVC either tonight, tomorrow. Fabulous. It is something that you should pick up and that you should try. All right, so let's move on to your 30s. You're getting a little older, aren't you? Here's the thing. When you are in your 30s, many of you still have student loan debt, and you have got to really be tackling that student loan debt. Why is that? That is because I tell you this all the time, student loan debt is a debt that's never going to go away. So I want you to make it your number one priority to get rid of that student loan debt. That is number one. Number two, I want you, if you don't have one already, I want you to seriously start thinking about saving enough money so that you can purchase a home that you can call your own. I know, I know. A lot of people are saying, I'm afraid of real estate. I don't want to get burned. Listen, in the long run, a piece of real estate is going to give you security. Given the price decline in many areas, it's going to be just as cheap as renting. So can you at least start thinking about owning a home? Number three, life insurance. Now you may be in a point of your life where you have children. Maybe you have a stay-at-home spouse. One of your spouses is staying at home to take care of your children. Things are happening. Maybe others are dependent upon you for your money in case something happens to you. So you need to look into making sure that you are properly insured. Term insurance is the way that you should go. Also, here you are with children. Possibly. You better have not only a will, but a living revocable trust as well. Because if something happens to you, your kids are minors still at this age. Who's going to take care of them? Who's going to watch over their money? You need a living revocable trust. Those are the things you need to put your pedal to the metal for. Where do you put on the brake? The only place that you put on the brake, honest to God, is you do not buy a home until you have at least 20% to put down an eight-month emergency fund and you don't have any credit card debt. Then you can buy a home. Until then, just go slow. All right, let's go to one of my Twitters, D.G. Stinner. He wants to know, what percentage of your annual salary should you have already in retirement by the age of, oh, 35? DG, listen to me. It's impossible for me to answer that question. And in fact, I'm going to say this to a lot of you that are tweeting me this question. How can I tell you how much money you should have in retirement when you aren't telling me how much money you make? You're not telling me enough things about you. Everything is personal about this retirement roadmap. So stop thinking that there is a certain formula you have to fit into this box. Look at your life. Look at where you're going. Are you on the right 
road here. Are you getting to where you need to go? The way to figure it out is this. If interest rates go back up to, let's say, 4 or 5 percent, where that's what you could get easily on an investment, you will need anywhere from 20 to 25 times your annual needs. So if your annual needs are $50,000 a year in retirement, or you project that's what you're going to need a year to live on, times 50000 times 20, times 25, that's about a million dollars. That's about how much money you're going to need in retirement to generate the income you need.